Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play WWE 2K14. I am the Mysterious JG. Uh, I got kind of a long recording session going. It's always risky because somebody might make a hilarious, wonderful comment that I want to respond to, and it'll be 30 videos before I get a chance. But we're on a bit of a roll here. I've been winning on the first try. I haven't actually lost yet during this session. So let's keep it going with our next match in 30 Years WrestleMania mode. So it is my honor and my privilege oh to present God, this to you match. the very first inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame oh, class this match. 2008. And more importantly, he's my friend. Because his whole career and everything he's accomplished is not as important as the fact that I have some personal fondness for him. As long as, long as you keep on winning, the next uh -huh. time you lose a match, your career is over. Only one kind of a thing jerk, in the world <laughs> that could make Ric Flair's career even bigger. And that would be to wrestle the man whose name is synonymous with WrestleMania. Hulk Hogan? Shawn Michaels. Oh. I am not going to be known as the guy that ended Ric Flair's career. Certainly not if I beat you. I can't compete with the best that I don't want my career to continue. I'm gonna give you the showstopper. I would expect nothing less. Are you gonna super kick me like you always do, you ass? Remember the story of old Yeller? Come oh. Sunday, the showstopper's gonna take you, old Yeller, behind the woodshed and put you out of your misery. That's kind of fucked up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? What are you gonna do about that? Like I said. I'm putting you out of your misery. Oh, make me slap you again until I get a different answer. Oh, I guess it's not going to super kick him. At least not there. Yeah, this is kind of a messed up thing. Shawn Michaels um, is designed to be the one to destroy and end Ric Flair forever. Ric Flair, as much as I love Ric Flair, yeah, the guy needed to stop wrestling many years before he actually did. But he's not the kind of guy who's going to do well as a manager or a commentator. He draws too much. He draws the attention to himself. He's he's never been particularly good at uh, at putting the emphasis or attention on somebody else, unless it's his opponent. Like if he's wrestling against somebody, he can really uh, bring them up. But he's not gonna like you know hang around and I'm managing this new kid and this kid's gonna get over. No, the kid is just gonna be in the shadow of Ric Flair the whole time. So he's stuck 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 around for forever as a a wrestler. Uh, I think he still pops up here. Like, he was in TNA wrestling even after this. Um, but no, that, that's the thing. It's one of these things where like, the storyline, if the storyline, uh, if history could be as good as the storyline, it would be fantastic. Like, you know, if Miss Elizabeth and Macho hadn't broken up after their on-screen reunion and Elizabeth ended up dying tragically, and you know, yeah, the story was just much better than the, the real life kind of screws it up. Uh, and, and, and to me, there's the whole Spock, Mr. Spock has such a great death in Wrath of Khan, and then they kind of screw it up and they bring him back. And this is like, what a beautiful setup they have for the final match of Ric Flair. But then he fucking pops up again later in TNA, because, I mean, the WWE creative staff is not actually allowed to determine how Ric Flair will live the rest of his life, even if they wrote him a, a really good ending, and, it, and it's kind of a shame if, uh, at any point, he doesn't, uh... He doesn't go along with the story they wrote for him uh, and just kind of ride off into the sunset, but, you know, go to some kind of Hyatt retirement home with, like, limousine riding, the wheelchair riding, um, <laughs> senior citizen flying, whatever, son of a gun, I don't know why I'm making fun of Ric Flair. But no, he uh, he didn't, if, he, if this is actually the end, it would be great. It was written to be this wonderful ending, but he kind of just didn't want to actually stop, so... On the March 17th edition of Raw, Mr. McMahon competed against Flair. During the battle, Mr. McMahon used a variety of dirty tactics to batter the nature boy. Just so it appeared that Mr. McMahon would emerge victorious, Michael distracted the referee. Flair prevailed in the end, thus securing his showdown against HBK at WrestleMania 24. On the February 25th, 2008 episode of Raw, Nature Boy Flair, despite an edict from Mr. McMahon that his next loss would force him into retirement, challenged Shawn Michaels to a match at WrestleMania 24. Michaels, after some reluctance, accepted the challenge. The heartbreak kid idolized Ric Flair growing up and didn't want to possibly end Flair's legendary career, but Flair insisted on the matchup. I think I might have read these out of order, but whatever. Point is, it's both of these guys are fan favorites at this point, and they're setting it up to be this like immortal, legendary match. 
and you will be seeing a very different model used for Ric Flair than we saw earlier. Because remember, Ric Flair's big title match against uh, Macho Man was his, his previous appearance in this game. That was WrestleMania 8. This is WrestleMania 24. There's one WrestleMania a year. You guys do the math, but some time has passed. The following is a career ripping match. Now in this contest, should Ric Flair lose, he must retire. Introducing first, from San Antonio. I pray that Jesus gives me the strength to crush this old man's dream. <laughs> oh boy. He's just a sexy boy who at this point is, um, you know, middle-aged. He's just a sexy man. He's not your boy, Can. As many of us were, tears were flowing down the face of the heartbreak kid. As many of us were, tears were flowing down the face. What? Mr. WrestleMania that Ric Flair wanted here tonight. And I will assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that it is Mr. WrestleMania that's the HBK versus Howard Finkel in the legendary matchup. I appreciate the fact that they have Howard Finkel. A pretty good representation of Howard Finkel just chilling out. HBK, HBK. It's written up there on the, the screen. HBK. So I just I had to skip out. I couldn't watch his full DX entrance. Getting kind of itchy trigger. Okay, it, it ended on its own. I didn't have to. It's getting itchy trigger and finger on the start button the here. Here we go, Carolina, folks. What? Pounds, He's Seymour Guado. I will become one of sin. No you know, join me and we will destroy man. spirit. Woo! <laughs> You should thank me, Titus. Your death needs your father's life. Woo! Shut up, fat boy! <laughs> no, seriously, look at him. He's Seymour Guado. He doesn't have the hair. Like, Liberace is looking at this thing saying, that's a little bit of feet, Rick. Are you sure you want to go with that look? Thousands upon thousands of fans have traveled from around the world are standing on their feet in respect of Rick Flair for this gay alien death angel Rick Flair <laughs> I love Rick Flair but holy shit I had forgotten just how ridiculous this particular robe was vintage nature boy are you sure you're not Michael Cole in disguise Jerry the vintage Cole call okay leaning AI or L against objects. You know, Irish whip them, or you can drag and hold. I actually got that to work recently. I'm proud of myself as, you, as the Undertaker. Right. Not express. What a tremendous so I, I'm going to put Ric Flair through a table? I doubt that. This is one of those WrestleMania moments where I'm going to get devastated, isn't it? If Ric, Flair loses here tonight, Ric Flair really didn't go through a lot of tables in his career. That wasn't really the kind of uh, show that he usually put on. WrestleMania moment. Allow Ric Flair to hit a move on you off the top rope. Ric Flair lost would be his last. And let's not forget, it was Flair. It has happened. He's hit he's hit moves off the top rope before. Like the thing is you can count the number of times on one hand in televised matches. There's pretty much every match later in his career. Part of the reason Ric Flair needed to retire. He'd wrestled so many times all of his spots. We'd seen them all a million times. And it just became a, a routine thing. Everybody had to Ric Flair always climbs the top rope and gets thrown off the top. Like if if his opponent doesn't counter, he doesn't know what to do. Alright. Now I'm going to put Ric Flair through a table, right? Oh, I can't believe that didn't work. Let's just say that Ric Flair is a great wrestler, but uh, he's Michael's a lot closer to his prime at this point than Flair is to his prime. Oh, I got to use the figure four. Uh, 
Can I do that on the outside or will it not count? Oh, this isn't what I meant to do. He's got the dreaded camel clutch locked in. Which is a pretty mean thing to do to Ric Flair, who once famously broke his back in a plane crash. Back into the ring now. Sean Michaels might be brash. Shawn Michaels has a crotch and he just chopped it, folks. But you must remember that Michaels can back it up like nobody else. Oh, do you hear that? Man, I've felt those reverse dive edge chops and they are brutal. And he strikes with a quick kick. And he's going to come back with his legendary camel clutch. See, I still got the comeback thing, but... Oh, yeah. Okay, I am supposed to hit Y there. I'm supposed to hit Y when we're both standing up. I'm probably just about to run out of time. But. And there's the flare flop. Okay, cool. I'm actually going to get to do my comeback uh, combo. Uh, I was supposed to hit H twice. I couldn't. Damn it, flare. I'm trying to do my comeback, you jerk. Lots of flipping. And, he got him. And, Woo! and here's a slap to the face of Ric Flair. That's probably not what Ric Flair wanted. So I got to give him a couple super kicks here. His crotch is getting worn out from all the chopping. Okay. If you, oh, damn, damn it, I was going to charge him. He was like, and now he's flare flopping again. Damn it, flare. He's getting uh, momentum from the flare flop. Oh, this is not good. Luckily, Ric Flair really has like no finisher that's going to be all that good here. Figure four is pretty worthless in this game. Because you'd have to really specifically target the legs in order for it to even work. And, and I didn't time the counter right, so. But no, I don't I don't think I'm gonna lose here. I, I suppose I could. Famous for being the worst finisher anybody ever had. But he did, I mean, just, just by using it, he's damaging the legs. So if I let him get it another time or two, I could be in real trouble. But no, he did this taunt roost, like, come come at me, and I tried to do a charging move. It would have been so awesome if that had hit. But no, he countered. That's a really devastating move if you do it against one-man gang. That's a mean-looking move, too. I'm doing... Doing chops and, and stuff. Oh, Alright, so let's get some finishers saved up. I'm going to need them. Uh, Sharpshooter's probably one of the easiest ones. Diving elbow is always fun, too. Shades of the Macho Man. Ooh, yeah. So i got to get a couple super kicks on him. Here's one. It's sweet to watch Ric Flair's entire career come crashing down against the crotch chopping moron. Sorry. <laughs> Not very respectful, Shawn Michael. <laughs> Truly, this is what Ric Flair wanted. His crotch has been chopped ruthlessly. Uh oh. Uh oh. Big time, we're all standing in line. Let's do another macho elbow. This one's for the lovely Miss Elizabeth. Well, the WrestleMania objective is to do it more than once, JR. It ain't my fault. The referee needs to get out of the damn way. Oh, here's our WrestleMania moment.
can you do it, HBK? Do you have the black heart needed to kill Ric Flair? Oh, this is actually this is actually pretty solid storytelling here. I I, I like this. A hug and a kiss to see you with the deal, baby. Dusty Rhodes is in the audience marking out. Even Ric Flair wants it to end. Oh. So wait a minute, why didn't I just finish it? <laughs> but Rick, he wanted it, didn't he? Did I just bust him open? Oh no, there, there's tears on the mat. Oh. And then I could have gone for the uh, sharpshooter on him, but I just wanted to be a douchebag. I'm not just going to pin you in your career, Ric Flair. I'm going to make you submit. Oh, are you kissing him? He's so sad. He had to... He had to send Seymour Guado to the far plane. Rick Flair really wanted to to lose here. It's kind of strange. Because oh, he wasn't going to make it to next year's WrestleMania without losing. And he definitely you want to go out at WrestleMania, so I suppose he did. I think it's weird to have a song featuring an orgasm at a solemn event. <laughs> anyway, folks. That's it. Um, I think I'm going to have to end this recording session on that. That's too too big of a moment to, for me to just keep going with some other lesser match. So uh, when we come back, I'll hopefully be playing as uh, player one instead of player two. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. This has been the Mysterious JG. Thank you guys very much for watching. Um, sharing with me the video game rendition of that very special event. The, the death of Ric Flair, sort of. Kind of. I mean... Yeah, sort of insulting and, and mean-spirited as, as the whole old yellow analogy sounds. It really kind of worked in that situation. We haven't been seeing him in this game, but Flair has been around wrestling this whole time. And just, you know, it had to, had to end. And this is a pretty good way to do it. Next time, folks, we'll have uh, a match we'll probably feature uh, fewer tiers. Sponsored by Johnson & Johnson. See you then.